Hello everyone, this is Eva Nolik Smith with Yoga You Online and I'm here today with Richard Miller, yoga therapist, author and founder of the IRS Yoga Nidra program. Richard integrates his extensive background in yoga with his training as a psychologist and he's particularly well known for his pioneering work using his IRIS program, the yoga need, integrative yoga nidra technique in working with veterans with post-traumatic stress disorder. And research has shown the wide range of benefits of the IRIS program to promote resiliency and well-being in other population groups as well. Richard, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Eva. Nice to be here with you. Great to have you. So you are so widely known and respected for your work with IRIST Yoga Nidra, which has been shown to help reduce stress, anxiety, insomnia, chronic pain, depression, um, certainly in high risk populations like veterans, but even more widely in uh, other pu people, population groups seeking even just to enhance wellness and well-being. Yes. Um, and we're here today because you have brought out a new program which you refer to as Body Sensing Hatha Yoga. Um, so since I very deeply respect all the work you've known with iRest and know how effective it is, if you are bringing out another technique, I know that this is something we should be paying attention to. So could you tell us about body sensing Hatha Yoga and exactly what is involved? Yes, I, I think of it as an approach. Uh, it's not necessarily a technique, although I guess we could say it that way. But I think of it as an approach. Um, the way our mind has been genetically programmed, it tends to conceptualize the body with a distinct center and a periphery. So when we use our eyes or when we touch our body, it feels like it has a defined border or boundary. Um, but in fact, when we really close our eyes, for instance, and begin to sense our body, just feel it, we recognize it as more a field of sensation and the sense of center and boundary begin to dissolve and as we pay closer attention to the body sense, it begins to expand more as a radiance. So we begin to realize the body doesn't actually have a fixed or defined border, but it's actually a more radiant field that expands as we stay with it farther and farther out into space. It's interesting that when we look at research, as people get under stress or they go through sorts of trauma, which could be anything from an illness, a accident like a fall or breaking a bone, or the more extremes of trauma as we might find in a car accident or a major illness or an act of war or terrorism, <clears throat> there's a tendency to disconnect from the body. Mm. Exercises like body sensing or hatha yoga are designed to increase our interoceptive ability to experience uh, the signals that our body is sending to us. Mm -hmm. um, athletes, people who are skilled, say, at hatha yoga or tai chi or other forms of exercise, have a deep relationship to their body. So they're able, even under stress, to maintain um, connection and know how to adapt and be more resilient than people who've lost connection with their body. So mm -hmm. body sensing, when I teach it, uh, I draw from classical Hatha Yoga postures, but the body sensing and the way that I've learned it actually comes out of a Kashmir approach to yoga where it's not about achieving or striving to attain some particular form. Rather, we're using the forms to heighten our ability to sense and receive information from our body. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we can do body sensing both 
in a lying or sitting static position, or we can uh, utilize it in a more movement-oriented system such as Hatha Yoga where we're taking different poses and we're using them to awaken, actually, a sensation mm. in the body. Mm. For instance, when we do a side bend, it awakens sensation along one side or the other of the body. When we twist, we awaken sensation deep inside the spine and on the surface of the skin and muscles. Mm -hmm. When we do headstands, shoulder stands, back bends, they're all designed actually to awaken different parts of the body and allow us then to access information that those parts of the body may be sending to mm -hmm. us. So we're really working with the whole oh, neural system of the body through the nerves, through the muscles, through the nervous system. So we're connecting, we're making connections, we're growing neural connections all through our body. That way, oh, say when we're starting to come down with a stressor, it could be anything from work-related, relationship-related, or we could be starting to get a cold or the flu. We get advanced warning. Uh, when we're really sensitive to the body, for instance, we may feel the coming of a cold days, even weeks before it arrives. That way we have the ability to um, make an intervention, take some time off, change our diet, get more sleep, mm -hmm. um, remove the stressors that might be weakening the body. Yeah. Um, you know, I have the example years ago of a student and during the practice of body sensing, <clears throat> as I was having her sense her body and really go inward, she began to feel a, a kind of a, what she recorded as a, a strange sensation. So I kept having her focus in on it through different poses, and she was able to localize more in the kidney area. And I actually recommended that she go check out uh, with her physician what might be going on if there was something just in case and she did and it was turned out to be the beginning of a kidney infection that if she hadn't caught it would become serious illness. Um, so body sensing, uh, basically what we're doing is when we're say moving a particular part of the body or holding it still, so it could be our hand, it could be in a side bend when we're bent over and we're experiencing the sensations that's arising as a result of the side bend. We're taking time to flush out the sensation. Mm -hmm. Normally, it's interesting if people really stop and consider when they may be doing hatha yoga, they're using more imagery and conceptualization, they're imagining where the arm should go, where the body position should be. It's actually conceptual yoga. Mm -hmm. If we really stop and feel the body, we have to let go of thinking and conceptualizing, and we really have to meet the body really at the deeper interoceptive level of sensation, vibration, we begin to feel the body as this vibratory, pulsing, shimmering. So as uh, you who may be listening, as you're, as you're listening to my words, for instance, just take a moment and sense one of your hands, the palms of your hands. Immediately to really sense the hand, you have to let go of thinking. And you can begin to feel perhaps the palm the fingers, not as a concept with border or boundary, but more as a field of sensation that's expanding both inwardly deep and outwardly beyond what you might ordinarily call the confines of the border of the skin. So we want to take different poses in body sensing, as I said, side bends, forward bends, back bends, twists, inversions, and think of each pose as a form that's going to awaken sensation in a particular part of the body, 
both at the surface and then deep in a way we're awakening the innate intelligence in each cell we are attuning to i would call the the universal life force that has given birth to our atoms molecules cells muscles bones and animates the body so we're we're creating an incredible sensitivity to the body through this form of hatha yoga the the main teaching then is we're getting out of striving to attain a particular form a particular posture a particular forward bend or side bend and we're using the forms as i said to awaken sensation in the body it's very beautiful um, you made reference to the Kashmiri tradition um, I know that you came originally to yoga, I believe, through the Kripalu yoga tradition with Swami. Actually, Shana. it was I came originally through the teachings of Satyananda and the Integral uh, Yoga Institute, and then from there had many, many teachers, uh, instrumental teachers, TKB Desikachar, uh, who I studied with in India and the United States, but then my spiritual mentor, Jean Klein, who really introduced me to this Kashmir tradition of yoga. Mm, interesting. I, I um, made reference to Kripalu yoga because it's the one yoga tradition that I'm familiar with that also incorporates um, what I think we can refer to as body sensing, a gap between the poses where you take the time to tune in and sense the imprint of the pose in your body. Yes. And uh, it's a very <clears throat> different experience. And the thing that's also interesting about it is that each pose leaves a very different imprint and a different sensation. So it's not just like a flat, homogenous field. It's very different expression of response in the body, which is just a fascinating field to explore. Yes, the Kripalu Yoga has that quality of body sensing that's very close to the Kashmir approach here. And I I draw in the, the work that I did with first Desika Char, where we were moving the body dynamically and then using the body in a more static position, holding it. The movement basically helps warm the body and awaken the grosser sensation. And then by holding the body still, we're able to dive deeper into the subtle realms of sensation, which my teacher Jean Klein called the energy body. Mm -hmm. So we're moving from a more grosser physical body to a subtler level of energy body. And then we're combining both the physical movements both in dynamic and static variations, along with the breath. In that way, the, the physical poses are kind of like working from the outside in, and the breath is working from the inside out. And when they meet, you have a very dynamic form of yoga. And we're using initially classical forms mm -hmm. uh, of yoga, uh, we could be drawing from other forms of exercise, but my tradition is yoga. So I, I initially uh, draw from more classical forms, but ultimately body sensing is a spontaneous, we might say, eruption of movement or holding where uh, we're really attuning to this dynamic force of energy that's within us that's animating the body and actually moving the body and we we align with it as we're doing the poses and then we begin to feel that we're not moving the body but the body is moving itself and we're flowing with this dynamic movement of energy that sometimes wants to move and sometimes just wants to remain quiet the Sanskrit word that it's drawn from is called Tandava, uh, T-A-N-D-A-V-A, -A, Tandava, and it just it makes it basically means spontaneous um, movement or spontaneous dance. So we might start by having a classical movement where we're raising the arm over the head or holding the arms out or 
doing a, some kind of moving twist. But then eventually we're trying to feel that flow of energy and just let the arms and the body do what it feels like doing in a very spontaneous manner. Kripalu yoga has these different aspects to it where it starts with more classical forms. Then you're learning how to sense the energy and then allow the energy to take over. Mm -hmm. So in a way we're letting go of control and feeling more how the life force is moving us, which has tremendous ramifications into our daily life, our relationships, and how we move in the world, both in work and play, and in our relationships with our spouses, lovers, or children, friends. Yeah. Because then we're really at learning how to attune to these deeper messages. I refer to it as life begins to live us, so we're not just living life, we're feeling how life is really coming through us and we're in a, each a unique expression of that life force. So life begins to become more spontaneous, more sense of freedom and openness. And paradoxically, uh, we let go into letting life move us. So there's a kind of a diamond dynamism of here where we feel a sense of being really in harmony life itself and we feel more connected both to our body to the others around us and to the actual world itself so body sensing eventually is designed to connect us to the source i call it essential nature that has given birth to the entire cosmos to each of us as individuals the rocks the trees so we really do feel dynamically connected so it it moves from an initial kind of interesting, simple movements that feel contained, where we're, we can sense ourselves as bordered and boundaried and limited, and it expands us into our unlimited interconnectedness with the entire universe. So it's a very, you might call it spiritual way of, of engaging Hatha Yoga, although I even like to remove the word, word spiritual because I think it really just connects us to our basic beingness, who we are as a human being. Yeah, yeah. We are moving into the realm of the mystic. Yes. <laughs> as you were talking, this quote of Rumi uh, came to mind and I googled it, so I'll just uh, read it to you here. Yeah. Out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and rightdoing, there is a field. I'll meet you there. Yes. And the soul lies and down in that grass. The world is too full to talk about. Ideas, language, even the phrase each other doesn't make any sense. You know, when you said a poem came to mind to you, that was the exact poem that I knew you were going to speak to. Because <laughs> Rumi says it so adequately the moment we stop thinking in our yoga and we really start feeling and sensing the subtle energies that are moving us that sense of separation begins to drop away conceptualizing drops away and we enter into what dan siegel has so beautifully called the world of infinite creativity and possibilities where we're no longer conditioned by our past. We are really opening to the newness of each moment. It's beautiful. So okay. yes, there's okay. a field beyond right doing and wrong doing conceptualization. <laughs> I'll meet you there. <laughs> Body sensing is one of our exquisite ways of entering into that formless form. Yeah. So it becomes a means of meditation I call it actually meditation in movement. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. That's beautiful. And could you give just a practical example? How would people incorporate this in their practice? Is it as simple as taking a moment after each pose and listen? It is actually as simple as that. I love sometimes uh, teaching uh, body sensing with a teacher who doesn't know anything about it. And so they're teaching 
the classical forms of asana or hatha yoga that they might normally be teaching to their group. And then I slide in with an ongoing commentary as they're teaching the poses. So uh, an example would be we might take a, a simple cat pose where we're on our knees and hands so we assume the form where the say the heels of the hands are the only thing that is fixed we might say to the ground everything else can have the capacity of moving in any direction so the knees could stay on the ground one knee could lift we could move weight from one hand or knee to the other we could move it forward or backward we could round the spine or arch the back into a backbend. So we have the freedom then Mm -hmm. to begin to utilize the form to experience and awaken different sensations in the body. So for a person who doesn't know body sensing, at first they might do the cat the way they usually do it, Mm -hmm. where they might be thinking of a particular way of rounding their back or arching their back Um, a way they've learned to do it, what they might subtly begin to perceive or explore is how they might have a a subtle striving that they're trying to attain a particular form of the pose that they might have seen in a magazine demonstrated by their teacher or another student or read about. When we start to Uh, enliven the body and sensation we step out of those images and those fixed ideas we have about the form and we let go of thinking and we enter into a deeper feeling tone I would say a felt sensing where we're just trying to sense sensation and then we may stay in the form where we're sensing sensation in a particular say side of our body or say in the back or the front and we begin as you say to listen and deeply welcome the sensations and the more we attune and listen those sensations which at first can feel very subtle begin to grow and expand and enlarge and we may begin to feel how say a particular sensation in our back or our front actually begins to grow and become more expansive and more field-like and lose its more localized center and begin to become more expansive. Mm -hmm. And we can then find ourselves in a cat for five minutes, ten minutes, awakening different sensations in the thighs, in the arms, shoulders, back, until we take a moment where we come to a full stop and we truly feel the whole body is vibration. So in body sensing, we may start with simple movements that are classical that lead us to more static moments where we're just stopped listening deeply and sensing. And then I think it's really important to take a rest pose where if we were in a cat, we may sit back on our heels, let our head move forward into a resting position like a child's pose or just sit up Mm -hmm. and take a moment with our eyes closed and really feel the effervescence of the body that the pose has brought to the foreground of our attention Mm -hmm. and feel how that I'll call the effervescence, the the field-like quality, the shimmering or radiance that we may then feel as a result of doing the pose. We stay with it and we feel how it expands Mm -hmm. outwardly in front, behind, the sides, below, above, inside and outside. Unbeknownst to many, what they're doing then through both the forms the active and the dynamic static forms, and then that moment where we take a full stop, we go more and more deeply into feeling, sensing, and away from thinking. It's actually enlivening different neural circuitry in the brain that takes our sense of time and space offline. Mm -hmm. It takes self-referencing, self-judgment, negative thinking offline, 
And it opens us to a whole new network of this infinite possibility of creativity, insight, and a deeper appreciation where we might begin to feel our interconnectedness with the entire universe. So we we lose ourselves as a bordered, boundaried, separate individual, and we return to that more basic, essential nature of our connectedness with all of life. That's so beautiful. it's interesting how just one pose like a cat a forward bend a side bend something that we've done a thousand times when we really stop and move from the more conceptual imaging aspect of it what we've known through a book or our teacher or what we've done a thousand times before and we come to this body sensing subtler level of sensation we step out of our conditioning and we really do open to a, a deeper aliveness and a spontaneity that breaks us out of our conditioned habits and opens us to a, a, a very deep understanding of our essential nature. That's so beautiful. It, one of the hot new buzzwords in psychology and, and in yoga is interreception. You used the phrase a couple of times the ability to feel um, what's going on inside your body as opposed to proprioception, which is the ability to feel your body in space. Yes. Um, but this sounds like it's almost more than the traditional concept of interoception as it is described by modern psycholo psychology. We are, I love how you're saying that at first, because we're doing the pose in time and space, we're awakening that proprioceptive ability. We're actually strengthening our neural circuitry to be able to know where we are at any given moment with respect to objects around us. We're increasing our sense of balance and that helps also create a deeper sense of resiliency as we uh, deeply sense the more interior regions of the body, we are awakening subtler neural circuitry that are actually increasing our resiliency and well-being and our ability to weather stressful events, life circumstances. So we're, we're increasing our ability to have a deeper sense of well-being no matter where we are. The modern psychology and I would say what most people experience during exercise, we're at a more superficial interoceptive ability. We're sensing the more surface sensations. Mm -hmm. Yoga is designed as our other forms like Tai Chi, Qigong, some of the forms of martial art they're really designed to awaken these even subtler movements of energy mm. that are beyond the more surface movements. So we can actually feel these currents or rivers of energy that are animating the arm, the body, uh, and allowing us to move in the world. Mm. Interoceptive takes us out of time and space and allows us to feel our unlimited aspect to our body. Proprioceptive helps keep us in time and space. So interestingly, by combining both the proprioceptive movement of Hatha Yoga and the more deeper interoceptive aspects of Hatha Yoga, we're strengthening our ability paradoxically to be both in time, in space, as a localized entity in relationship with other objects that are located in time and space, even as we're awakening a deeper aspect that knows no time, no space, no sense of border boundary or limitation. So we actually, when we sense another object from an interoceptive perspective, we don't recognize border or boundary. We feel this interconnected field that enlivens everything so we don't feel a sense of separation. And yet our eyes and our brain still see border and boundary and we can relate to the other as a separate object. So we, 
we bring on line through interoceptive body sensing, what I call we awaken the seventh sense, the mm. six senses, the five senses and the mind as a sixth sense thinking. All are doing their job to create a sense of time, space, border, boundary in this seventh sense, which interoceptive awakening arises through body sensing doesn't know border or boundary or separation. Now we're operating, I would say, on all seven cylinders that were designed as a human being to operate on. Mm -hmm. Fortunately for most people through stress and just the circumstances of life, they've cut off this interoceptive ability to sense this interconnectedness with the universe. Yoga is designed to really reawaken that. That's so beautiful. Richard, I could keep you here all day, but I know you are a busy man. So last question, you are offering a course on Yoga You Online on body sensing Hatha Yoga. So tell us about the course and what you are covering in, in the course. Uh, the course is designed to explore these different aspects of proprioception, interoception. I want to explore how we can take our standard way of doing hatha yoga and begin to build into it another form so we're not um, taking something away. We're actually in deepening our practice of hatha yoga. So I'll be exploring how does body sensing work? What are some of the ways we can conceptualize it so we can begin to orient to it and integrate it into our practice? Mm. And then I also have some slides I want to share with the audience uh, around how these different neuro circuits that we've discovered mm. through research, the attention network, the default network, this present-centered network of infinite possibilities, how how we're basically awakening some of these we're turning certain switches on in the nervous system and we're turning certain switches off we're strengthening certain switches and we're deactivating certain switches like uh, negative self-referencing thoughts that people get caught in self-judgment self-criticism we're actually learning through body sensing how to take these offline and strengthen what we might call the more positive attributes of ourselves as human beings. So I'll be looking at these different aspects. And then uh, for those who are interested um, through Yoga U online, we've created this second course, which is actually guided body sensing sessions. Also what I call breath sensing sessions, where we're actually now letting go of physical movement and we're tuning to the subtle levels of breath and how that awakens even subtler currents of uh, of energy in the body interoceptively and then the practices of yoga nidra where now we're in a very static position and we're awakening even subtler realizations to these levels and then learning how do we combine these meditative aspects say that are coming out of yoga nidra meditation the breath sensing and the body sensing and they all come together to form a very unique view of what we might call hatha yoga the awakening of these deep energies within us where we might remember that hatha hatha yoga means sun and moon the sun energies and the moon energies and hatha yoga really is that that awakening or attuning to those energies that are already present we're just realizing them through the practice. So the course is hopefully designed to orient people and, and um, entice them into yes. wonderful practices. Yeah, and it's it's great that we will have both the opportunity to learn the theory side uh, with you and all the very deep aspects of what we're doing with the technique and then also have you teaching the actual techniques in video practices. Um, yes. So we very much um, appreciate you joining us for this course, Richard, and thank you so much for joining us today as well and taking the time. Thank you, Eva. It's lovely to have Yoga You online as this wonderful portal to bring these teachings and make them available to people who otherwise might not have access them. So uh, thank you for your good works.
Well, thank you. It's our joy and our pleasure to be able to interact with so many great illustrious beings such as, as yourself and all the other teachers we have. We really feel very grateful from our side as well. Take care and namaste. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste.